So, friends, this is my friend, Dean Nicopolis. You see him there on the left. You can see Nicopolis on his coat. This is Dean with Elvis. Dean was Elvis's valet. He also taught Elvis how to play racquetball, and he was training to be security. That's Dean on the far right in Hawaii in March of 1977. This is Dean's ID. He was definitely Memphis Mafia. This next little video clip is Dean clearing off Elvis's grave in 1980, and he's going to tell the story about what happened right here. After Elvis passed away, Dean, along with Al Strada and Dick Grobe, stayed on and worked at Graceland and ran security. Now, Dick left in 79. Dean stayed on along with Al until 80-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood, and then left. And he'll tell some of those stories. Stay tuned. What's the feeling that strikes you when you actually arrive here? Very sad. Very sad. We've never seen something so beautiful. None of that here. Why is that? Sorry. Because it's respect for Elvis right there. We don't like it right here. Okay, so we can do it here. I'll just do it off the ground. Anything off the ground, you can do it. You cannot do it on the ground, right here. What is the reason? Respect. Do you think it's right to do that in front of a guy's tombstone like that? It's only respect. That's right. It's not for commercial reasons. There is a terrible... You don't even allow that kind of camera up here. There's a terrible rumor that you've sold the rights to the grave to Warner Brothers and to film companies. Now, that can't be true. Well, I'm just telling you, if you're going to give me a hard time, I'll have to ask you to leave, okay? Either you do it nicely, or either way is fine. I'm just, I'm just trying to be nice to you. There's none of that here. And I'm just asking you... When did, that, when did that start? It's been like that, sir. We have never had that here in front of the grave. I don't think that's true. Are you calling me a liar? I'm saying I don't think it's true. Will you come here, okay? Y'all come here for a second. I'll you guys. And of course, the story the guy's telling them that they've sold the grave rights is not true, but they do get escorted off the property. Now, Dean will tell you what happened. Dad was the calm one. Easy go. Mom was the bulldog. I mean, if she saw somebody taking advantage of Dad, she gonna tell him, hey, he's taking advantage of you, yada, yada. And Dad was just laid back. He would say, hey. Don't, you know, just he, the, the world could be like everything could be on fire right there, and he'd still sit back and talk to you. You know what I'm saying? Mom, come on, George, we gotta go. Let's do it now. Don't sit there and wait. And so, Mom had a couple of incidences that was so funny. You know, so we go back, and she had a good temper though. That's one thing. Mom had a good little temper. Dad had no temper. I not, I've never saw him get really mad. Really? He just didn't have that temper. I never saw him. And uh, that's what was amazing. You know. Because if I'd have had a temper, you know, with me, um, I took after my mom probably, you know, on that side. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm pretty calm until I get to that point, though. So, but I can get to that point. Right. I know you can. Yeah. yeah. And I try not to. Yeah. You know, but well, we I saw did, that video of you earlier dealing with the guy trying to film at the grave when they weren't even supposed to have a camera up there. Exactly. Yeah. And you were calm and nice to him. I thought you know? I was, you know, and uh, Al was nice. We sat there to ask him, and he was just, uh, er he was a little arrogant. He didn't want to. He, didn't, he, he wanted to make a scene right there at the gravesite. And, we, and you're not going to do that right there. Because, yeah. see, back then it was free. They walk in free. They weren't paying. It was all free. So. And how long in was that? Two, how, how long later would you say? I think that was start? like two. Uh, that was About two years? Yeah, yeah. Seven, how long were you there after 77? I August left 77. probably 80. I think okay. it was 80. I left. And uh, went into the liquor business. Tell them why you left. I left because when I was, well, a couple of reasons why I left. It was getting, it was, it was, it had changed. A and lot. Vernon had passed away about right. that time. Once Vernon was gone, they, they made it into a, like a guards mark thing. Just, and just, it wasn't even fun. None, none of it was fun anymore. And uh, we were down, I was down there at the, uh, let's see, Vester called me up one night and said, hey, I got a, I got a guy here blocking the driveway. I said, well, get him out of the driveway. We can't get the people through here if you, you know, not, there's no way, it's not safe. He said, he said, he's not moving. I said, well, call the police. He said, you sure? I said, I'll come down there. So when I went down there, um, I went down there to ask him to move. He had like a five-year-old son, or three, between four and five. And I said, uh, he's sitting in the middle, the little kid was. The guy pulled up a gun. He said, I'll leave when I want to leave. I said, that's fine. You can stay here all night. I don't care. So I left. Called the cops, told the cops what we had going on. They came down, asked him to leave. He didn't leave. Then they took him down to the crazy floor, uh, and he said, I wish I had just shot that guy. And I said, you know what? It's time to get out of here. And that was it. You know, mm -hmm. I, and I took off, and, you know, and I 
last week. Because it was starting to get pretty wild. Some, by that yeah, time. I mean, I had ladies come in there. This is, there was some funny stories. I mean, I had a lady come in there, pull through the driveway in her pajamas. I said Elvis just called me, told me to come on up. And I said, well, he didn't call me yet. <laughs> he didn't tell me you were coming. <laughs> so, and she she got real stubborn. She wouldn't open her doors. She locked right there. She said she wasn't gonna get out till he came. So, we proceeded to have the policemen. They came up there and. The, the policeman had a little billy club back in the day. Remember those little billy club yeah. locks on the thing? He said, you're going to have to get out of here. She said, I ain't going nowhere. He said, you're going to have to go out of here. He said, if you don't get out of here, we'll tell you out. We're going to tow you. They got a tow truck, towed her, towed her on through there. With her in the car. Yeah. <laughs> it was the funniest thing i ever seen. <laughs> so, I mean, we had some pretty funny things going. I had one person come up to me back in the 78 or 79. She, ran, she, said, she said, I'm going to go jump in that pool regardless. And I said, well. I can't stop you if you run around that side. I, you know, if you jump in, you're gonna come out and have to leave. About three minutes later, she jumped in that pool. She, you know, we marched her right back out. But she could say she was in Elvis's pool. Yeah. I mean, that's one thing she could say. So we had some crazy things like that. There was nothing really bad, you know. But you know, just like just like now, if you got good signs, you know, we had signs put up: stay to the right, stay to the right. People would go to the left just to don't take pictures in front of the house. Back then, they wouldn't let you do that. And uh, like you take them aside, but not the front. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that set up, and we'd see people trying to take pictures all the time, just stuff like that. Stuff like I do now. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we'd, have to, we'd have to watch out for you. Yeah, really. We'd have to watch out for you after the, last night. I, yeah. I'm, I'm worried about you. I know it. That's a, you know what kills me about that though? They, there was no. Uh, they didn't have much respect for you. Just yeah. to run you out of there, knowing that you got 11 o'clock time to go up there. Well, she never even asked us that stuff. She never gave us a chance. I told her, "Hey, there's the signs didn't say we can't drive in here. It says this is the entrance. Where did you? Where did you? What did you want me to do?" You know, and I was like, "Well, where do you want me to park?" She she wouldn't say. She said, "I don't care where you park." I go, "Where do I park?" I don't care where you park. That's that's not an answer. That's not that's that's just sarcastic. <laughs> you know what's yeah. funny is when uh, I took some couple buddies of mine through there, and uh, there there's a lady came up there one of their guards, not the guard, I guess, whatever, back in the day, tourists telling yeah, everybody what this is. This is his, saying this was his favorite room and all this. And I don't know. I had a buddy of mine. I was explaining to him where he really stayed out. So she came up to me. And she says, you think you, you think you know you think you know this better than I do? And I just smiled at her. I said, it's your show, you know. But when we went to the grave site, I looked on the grave site, and I asked her, I said, well, let me ask you a question just while I'm here. I said, is your name on that flame? she looked at me. I said, that's my name right there. Now what? And she didn't know what to say. <laughs> you know, like, because, I mean, heck, I stayed there for three years, you know, on and off, spending the night there. And uh, it made it more fun. And then uh, what was funny was Dad, both of them were so low-key. Dad was so low-key it wasn't funny. It'd be 2 o'clock in the morning, he'd just open the door. He didn't care. I mean, Dad didn't care. He woke him up, he woke him up. He going that was just dead. He'd do anything to help anybody. He had next door neighbors trying to come over and help him. In fact, I had a, I had a somebody, I did a little talk show the other day and I had a guy on the talk show call in saying how dad helped him. Mm -hmm. back, I remember that. I heard it. Yeah. Back in the day. And that's pretty cool when you can still hear people saying, you know, what he mm -hmm. did instead of all that, the riff raft, you know, and all that yeah. good stuff. But it made it more fun. And this is peaceful here because we come here and uh, pay our respects and, you know, it, whether it's have a cup of coffee and sit with him because we used to drink coffee every morning. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you miss that and you just miss all that. Of people, course. People don't yeah. realize that. Oh, he was 88. Yeah, he was 88, but still, he's not here. He's still your daddy. <laughs> he's yeah. still your daddy. So. Well, this is a beautiful place under this tree. So let me ask you, um, and I've never asked you this question before. Um, I, it had to be hard. You're working for Elvis. And then he's gone. You're still working there. That had to be really hard. That was, you know, what made that hard was that you could, but here's an, a, a good thing about it was we would go into the, uh, at nighttime down there, just, you could sit and talk, you know, pray and all mm -hmm. that, because we were the only ones there. You could spend time in the meditation yes. gardens. You're saying so, kind of like you spent time with your dad. Right. And you I could spend, spend time, time down Elvis. there. And, you know, you'd ask questions and stuff like that. You, you know, you feel, you felt, still, still had that little click, just a little, you know, because yeah. it was so peaceful down there at the time. Yeah. Now everything's just so, 
you know, yeah. it, it's not it's not like it so was. you don't get those same feelings when you go no, through there no. yeah. when you go through there now it's just like a, it's not it's not like it was you know yeah. I, mean, I can sit you know I can sit there and just just I can just meditate and just think about things you know yeah. the good times are you really there is this here you know it's just it didn't seem like it happened when it happened yet because everything was so fast yeah and you could actually sit, sit some time you know thinking and to me you know, I just wish they would, the people there, you know, it, the, our people were, the ones there, they cared a lot, you know, they were just, you know, you're going to wash them right on out of there, you know. Yeah. And so I don't even, uh, they got their little radio thing, I don't fool, I bet I had talked on that thing in a long time, you know, I guess. So they kind of did away with the people that had skin in the game, let's say that were family or employees prior right. to him passing that were really a part of it, they kind of forced all of those people they out. They forced all of us out. I mean, think of the, the only thing that was keeping any of us in there at times was George Klein, because he would call us. Now they don't have anything to do with you. They won't talk to you, which I don't, that's fine. That's, you know, to me, that's fine. It's not my loss. It's their loss. It's mm -hmm. not mine. They don't want to talk to us. But you'll hear certain people on the radio, and you're going like, why is he on the radio? He didn't even really know much, you know? Yeah. So, what, you know, you're going, why do you call him? But now, but see, George would call you all the time to talk to you. They want, I guess somebody there don't want nobody talking to her, which is fine, like I said, but they're gonna, there's going to be a time in the day they're going to wish they had somebody that was there that was knowledgeable. I you agree. Know, yeah. You know, the hands-on. They're missing all of the, the real history. Well, see, I always thought at the beginning if they'd put Charlie Hodge there and they'd put a couple of those other guys there and let them, not us, we were too young, but the older guys, and yeah. them, that'd been great for them. Yeah. And you could walk in and this, you'd have... You'd see a real person that was right, really there. Right, you yeah. see, You'd see Charlie, you could see whoever wanted to be there, Billy, I mean, just any of those guys. Yeah, but now you look at it, it's, it's not the same. You know, I, I mean, I don't, I mean, there's still some relatives here, his work in there, which is cool. You know, I don't have problems with any of the people. I just don't like the way it sort of got more of a commercialized, mm -hmm. it's not like it's the, the hands-on. Now, when you stayed there, when you were doing guard duty and that kind of stuff, you didn't sleep there at night? Uh, no. Well, we would work, I would work some from like, I think it was like 10 to 8 in the morning, working mm -hmm. 10 o'clock at night to 8 in the morning. I wouldn't sleep. Oh, so you would go around the clock. So y'all were actually guarding. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. Dick was still there. Yeah, at first. Okay, at first. Yeah. Okay. so yeah. where would you sleep at that? We didn't sleep. So you were that was your you were awake the whole time, right. literally guarding the place. Right, we never went to sleep, and unless you accidentally fell asleep sitting in that little guard shack. Yeah. So we built the guard shack. There. So that little guard shack, you were in that guard yeah, shack. Yeah, the top right. We had it built there, and, okay. was, and we had a little unit air conditioned unit in there because yeah. it was getting hot and that's how all that started so late at night we'd sit in there you know and wait you know because you could see everything yeah but we'd have to still walk around you know vernon had a um had a slot put in there that people could donate and drop food Do you recall that slot he had a little uh it had a, a thing yeah. that asked for donations. Yeah. It was like a thing that it almost looked handwritten that was I, on that wall. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, that would go into the guard shack. And you got to remember what was cool about it is, uh, you know, Vernon lived right in the back. Yes. All right. So what makes that cool is uh, we could walk right out the back into Vernon's back. And there was a gate, you know, the gate, you would open it up. We'd, mm -hmm. we'd be in Vernon's. Elvis could go back there and visit his daddy that quick, mm -hmm. you know, which was pretty cool. And he did do that. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. The only thing I hated about back there, if you walk back there, you just want to make sure you'd step in horse, horse poop or something because yeah. there was so much horse, you know, back there. Yeah, it was, the it was in the... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was know, the pasture. But that right? house was cool. Vernon's house was pretty cool. I mean, I remember, you know, going in it, sitting and stuff like that. But uh, we didn't walk around it and stuff like that. You know, we just go in that living room, you know, yeah. and stuff like that. But just keep an eye on Elvis, really make sure he's all right, you know. But... but he used it though. That house was used a lot. You know, yeah. that's, and that was pretty clever them to have the house and because he could just keep an eye on everything. Kept you know keep an eye on his daddy, make sure everything was okay. Yeah. So anything else? That's that's interesting. So when you're were at the house, um, I'm just trying to I'm trying to picture um, what that was. Oh, okay, so you said you were there overnight. Did any crazy people ever jump the fence like me? We had people come around all the time. Really? Oh yeah. I mean, you could see people on the upside on the top. On the, we had a person. You know, if you go to the gate down, you know the horses ran up and down all the way yeah, on the right side. Yeah. yeah. And down there, people would try to jump that fence and try to sneak up. So we had some people like that. Mm -hmm. but we never took people to jail or nothing. Yeah. We just got them out of there. You know. Uh, 
so we always had to keep our eyes on. We wasn't like some kind of cushy, cushy thing because you, you didn't know who was coming to visit. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. Um, and Al was there. At the Al and I just stayed up there and doing that. That's what we did. And you mentioned that that guard shack, y'all built that. So prior to Elvis, that guard shack was not there. No, that, that was not there. Okay. No, we had that built. Uh, and, well, they actually added the concrete too, you know, the walkway. Yeah. Because it wasn't a walkway there. That's right. And so we added all that. And that was just because it was getting so, we were getting so bombarded. I mean, it was like, I don't know how many thousands of people were trying to come every day, you know. In the summertime, it was crazy. And then you had all the entertainers wanting to come through there just to say they pay their respect. Yeah, like who? Oh, yeah, Bob Seger coming through there, Huey Lewis. Uh, just, I mean, it just goes on and on. I mean, we had Lou Ferrigno. The whole, really? Oh, yeah, the he whole... came, yeah, he came through there. Had Bruce Springsteen. So all those and all those guys would come through there. And what we do is uh, they would give them a, like a little, when it was all, we'd come and close it down sort of, and then they would come up at a certain time, you know, there was nobody there. We walk him through there, and Bruce Jackson, who worked for Elvis, he was a, he didn't work for Elvis actually. He worked the sound, right? Sound with, guy with Felton Jarvis, and he was working for Springsteen. So he we had Springsteen come. He wanted to come see it, so we met with Bruce. Bruce is cool, and uh, huge Elvis fan. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, he, I mean, he was just and back then he was supposed to be he was on his working out thing, you know. Hell, he gave me tickets to his first concert. I didn't want them. I saw him. I your tickets. I didn't, I didn't know who he was. <laughs> I really didn't. I did yeah. not know who that guy was. And, uh, and Bruce Jackson says, you got to go, man. Just go. It hurts feelings. I said, I don't know who he is. Yeah. And he says, just go. Because I hadn't been to a concert since Elvis died. You got to remember. That's interesting. So uh, I think uh, we go there. We went there. I think it was at the Orpheum, too. It wasn't at the Coliseum. Mm -hmm. back then. It was the Orpheum, I think. Smaller place. Yeah. And he said, and uh, Springsteen said, when you get there, come ask for me and uh, come backstage. That's what. So you know how you do that. You knock on there to come backstage. Next thing you know, uh, his manager said, you can't be here. You can't be back here. I said, I understand. I said, they asked me to come back here, but that's cool. About that time, though, Springsteen was actually walking through and stopped and came up there and comes and gets us and takes us and gives us, uh, he said, here's some Hanukkah beer. Y'all get help yourselves and go sit in the, go, I got seats there. Gave us tickets to the movement set right in row eight to the right and watch the show so i mean he was and he put a great show on but i but i still didn't know who he was you know <laughs> i really didn't you know? so the you the your last concert was elvis mm -hmm. before elvis passed mm -hmm. your first concert after elvis passed was bruce springsteen uh -huh. that's interesting yeah we went and saw springsteen it was something different you know, are I, you a fan now yeah yeah he's I like I, he did I like a great him. job i like him I think yeah he's, he's the a, boss yeah but Elvis was really the boss. Elvis, Elvis was the main. There ain't no doubt about that. There's only one Elvis. That's, <laughs> that's what right. I tell people. But you know, when you look at that place, people don't realize. You look at Graceland, and you go, he recorded here. He rode go karts here. I mean, he shot Roman candles at each other on Fourth of July. So he enjoyed Graceland. People always asked, "Is this was that the place? You know, what do you think he enjoyed the most?" Well, I always saw him at Graceland. I mean, I saw him at Palm Springs a couple of times, but when he was at Grayson, you know, he could relax, he could go do things, and, uh, you know, without, he had Aunt Delta there, you know, getting back and forth, running back and forth, and Vester, he kept every, it was like a family thing still, I guess, you know. So friends, we'll have more with Dean Nicopolis. He actually would make his mom's hamburger steak for Elvis. August the 11th, 2022, we're going to have a night with Dean, and he's actually going to make us Elvis's favorite Greek hamburger steak, just like he cooked for Elvis. So you got to come. Go to the TigermanMuseum.com, click on tickets, and scroll down, and we will have those tickets available real soon. Thank you so much for watching. We'll have some more with Dean in the future. Appreciate you, Dean. Thank you so much for taking care of the boss like you did. If you want to support this effort, make sure that you subscribe, like, and then join. It helps us to get more videos out there. Yes, it does.